Hello. Today is April 8th, and I'm back with a camera, and this section is all business. And Rue is laying down here. I was going to have her come up, but she's just looking at me now. Aww. Aww. Doesn't she know that she's the star? She didn't seem to care when I told her that the commenters really liked her. Yeah. She was just kind of like, yeah, whatever. She's not yeah, phased by celebrity. No. She's better than that. <laughs> Give her time. <laughs> Well, like I say, this is all business and uh, a weird mix of news as usual just because not much is going on and most of them tie back to, guess what? It's the, the thing, thing that's controlling our lives. We're giving you timestamps this week. Now, the patrons and float plane people, they always had them, but we didn't put them on YouTube because YouTube is really dumb. But you shouldn't say that because if we put them on Monday's video or Tuesday's this... video and they get demonetized, we won't put them on this video. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. What? Yeah. This whole series of videos was supposed to be like a scientific experiment, but it's a really poorly constructed. <laughs> Remember that time we did Barbie's Dream House? <laughs> we're testing. We're testing too many variables. We're like, let's test the camera. Let's test if we get demonetized. Let's test this. It's fine. It's too much. So the business world is mostly revolving around this thing, and Amazon is certainly no exception because Amazon is now uh, our Essential. like one window to getting some products into our homes. And a lot of people are depending on it, but you have to think about what about the people in those warehouses? <laughs> That's some close quarters in some cases. I was thinking to go off on a little bit of a tangent for a second. I was also thinking about Amazon and like their original purpose of, of being a bookstore. All the bookstores are shut down as non-essential. And so like, you, you know, imagine you're that, that like... 62 year old guy three years away from retirement with the amazing bookstore that's the community hangout that has, you know has hung on through all the tough modernization of things and then now it's like everything is shut down but amazon can still continue to sell books and you can't and it's like no <laughs> <laughs> and we also have to think about the delivery drivers who aren't necessarily always amazon employees but you know they're still out there on the front line dealing we, with all this we have a lot of have had a lot of testing positive at those warehouses as well and who speaks for them? Because for the most part, they're not unionized or anything like that. In fact, Amazon looks very, looks down on that quite a bit. Now, some people, one guy in particular, have spoken out and said, hey, wait a minute, who's protecting us? And uh, Amazon had a, a very uh, definite response to that. <laughs> You're fired. <laughs> uh, Bloomberg reports the firing of the Amazon strike leader draws state and city scrutiny. They literally refer to him as not very smart. That's the next story. Oh, right. Sorry. So the thing they fired him for is the biggest insult. It's really the, the slap in the face or maybe like rubbing his nose in his own poop is oh. they fired him for violating a quarantine order. <laughs> so he stirred up the peons and said, we got a strike against this. And they said, uh, you've, been in, you've been exposed, go home for 14 days. And he came back for the strike and they said, no, 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 you're violating quarantine. You're done, you're out. A little suspicious. Now, as you alluded to- Even more so. There were some internal memos about this gentleman and they've come to light. <laughs> Amazon exec called fired worker not smart in leaked memo. So it seems pretty clear that he's going to have an open and shut uh, case as far as the uh, like the unemployment review. I forget what that is. It's like they, they officially fired him for the whole quarantine thing, but this shows that they had a bias against him. So they really better make sure they've got their documentation in order as far as everything else goes because it's probably not going to go well for them. Although, and I hate to be... Uh, soulless and callous in this way but if this guy succeeded and they're like all right we're done we're not shipping anything how mad would you be i i wouldn't be mad at first but then af after yeah. the supplies dwindle <laughs> it would get bad. yeah you'd so, have to start going to the store like a peon uh, now i wouldn't mind if amazon was like okay every order that you place right now is just worth extra dollar and all those dollars are going to go to directly to the some workers. kind of fund, yeah, in some manner. I would be fine with that, yeah. Uh, but it shutting it down entirely would be terrible. So, well, I think that a lot of the, you know, of all of the warehouses that have had testing, the testing has been very bad. 
which suggests that the workers really should be wearing like full-on hazmat suits because there's just so much stuff in and out of there and it'll survive forever on paper apparently that it's not a good situation for those well, workers also no i mean those warehouses are running around the clock yeah you got four shifts and you know the, the same people working in the same spot different times out of the day so yeah. Yeah, terrible terrible situation and here's the thing about amazon during you know most businesses are getting crushed by this except grocery stores and amazon are killing it they are getting way more orders than they can handle so what do you do seasonal hiring now this is no different than what they do during christmas it's the same thing it's like hey initiate the christmas protocol immediately however the christmas protocol is not prepared for the thing at all. And so the systems that are already bad, like you're talking about, <laughs> are way worse during the Christmas protocol. Amazon's hiring boom for the thing has applicants packed into job fairs with no special precautions. Targeting 100,000 recruits, the company dusted off its holiday season hiring playbook, but says that it has since begun making events virtual. So yeah. There's a picture of all of them, like, yeah. crammed in. Oh, like, that's not good. That is not six feet. Yeah. No, not at all. I don't know. Some of the data, some of the data is saying that, you know, a significant percentage of people are just completely asymptomatic. So yeah, 33%. Right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, even, you know, I don't, it's just could be even more. You don't know. Now the guy that took that picture pointed out that he voiced concern after taking that picture. And everybody was like, bro, just shut up. We need these jobs. All right. Yeah, no one there has a mask on or gloves or you don't like it. Just, Get out. We don't need you. That is a little horrifying. And uh, no one knows exactly when. It's always a secret, although it's usually in July. Amazon rolls out the big Prime Day. Oh, it's that holiday that they literally created <laughs> and made an actual holiday and were successful at it. How much power you does guys usually Amazon? buy stuff on Prime Day, right? I don't know if I have. I haven't. I, I usually I have, don't. I haven't the last one or two, but there was one Prime Day where... There was something I'd been watching for a long time, and the algorithm was like, hey, this thing that you keep loading and looking at is like 33% off. <laughs> and it was like, oh, man. Well, I gotcha. Prime Day, you know, it's it's a big hit. I mean, even if we don't buy stuff, a lot of people do. And I think they kind of count on that in their annual budget. So even though it's still a ways off, they've said, uh, you know what? Maybe time to rethink that. <laughs> Exclusive. Amazon to delay their Prime Day event due to the thing and outlines the cloud risks. It's uh, postponing its major shopping event Prime Day until at least August and expects a $100 million hit from excess devices. It might now sell at a discount. So apparently they ramped up production for something and they've got a whole bunch of devices sitting in a warehouse and yeah, that's not good. Ooh. Alexis were what they pointed out. But you're supposed to sell them at a discount on Prime Day. So yeah. you're selling them at a discount to the discount? Well, I noticed, you know, we reported last week that the uh, the Facebook portal device, you know, like the video conferencing thing, has sold out. It is still sold out. Like you can't, they're making them as fast as they can. You just, you can't. So if they were planning some kind of Alexa video conferencing feature, that might have been, mm -hmm. you know, or they could that. pivot to that if those Alexas have a camera. God, it's going to be just, you know, we've always talked about, the mass acceptance of the spying devices in the home. Yeah. Like, how long will it take for that? This has just accelerated us straight into the wall on yeah. that dark reality. Yeah. Great. And when it comes to tracking you and watching you, Google is certainly at the forefront because you're always carrying that phone in your pocket, aren't you? And they have that location data and they know where we've all been. <laughs> oh my God, they know so much. And in their you know benevolence they've said ah you know what we'll share a little bit of this knowledge with the governments <laughs> so that they can help corral you filthy plebs and your dirty diseases google is publishing location data from 131 countries to show how the lockdowns are working for the thing so spoiler alert italy italy is on the ball i guess uh it's very sobering if you live in italy but uh california not so much california you receive a grade of an f you fail but there's a website, and you can go on there and check out the little dots and how they're moving around for your hometown. How exciting. It needs to Probably not be moving around. Much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one of the other companies that has been heavily criticized for their response to this whole crisis is Tesla. 
<laughs> and of course, when we talk about Tesla, we also talk about SpaceX because it's the same madman who runs the whole show. And we'll start with the SpaceX news. He's had another setback. SpaceX yeah. loses its third Starship prototype during a cryogenic test. We will see what the data review says in the morning <laughs> is what is what he tweeted. He also said that it's looking like this may have been a test misconfiguration, but they'll see. So they had done a, I guess, a regular test at normal temperatures and pressures. But once this thing is actually in space, it's going to be cold. And so that's what they mean by cryogenic test. So it failed. It failed catastrophically when it was uh, configured for space-like conditions in terms of like how cold the material was. And it got brittle and just exploded. And it's funny he said in the morning, because the last time when that high-pressure test blew up, he apparently summoned all the managers to, even the ones that weren't there for the test, to the facility at 3 a.m. to berate them. <laughs> so I guess... Yeah, there's there's a quote in here that's that's pretty... Uh, About the babies? Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, in the future, you treat that rocket like it's your baby and you do not send it to the test site unless you think your baby's going to be okay. And then the, uh, the article writer writes, this baby was not okay. <laughs> <laughs> now I don't even like babies. But if I had no. one, I wouldn't put it through cryogenic testing. <laughs> no, I wouldn't either. <laughs> But if you did have a baby that survived cryogenic testing, that might be the next evolution of <laughs> humanity. I would just sell it. I would just oh. like, I'd be like, hey, China, <laughs> you want to study this? <laughs> Ten million. We're, we're going to have to make a small cut there. Why? Someone just walked by. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, we can just, no, no, we don't have to cut. He can just put something over the video. Okay. okay. Well, the, the, you he remember the time it. index. What time index was it? Uh, 12 minutes. Okay. Well, <clears throat> 11.40. Yeah. Okay. Do it. We won't lose any of that, right? No, we can just cover it up. Yeah, Cut this part. Cover it. Cut this part, but leave the... Okay. Just, just put censored and have a black bar moving in the background. Just have a, like, Rue's head just pop up over top of it. Do we have a good picture of Rue? Yeah, one on your some, Twitter. Oh, of course I've got good pictures of Rue. Of course. <laughs> you have a fridge, a snack fridge next to your computer. In other SpaceX news, uh, of course we talked about Zoom and the concerns that a lot of people have over its privacy controls and the whole end-to-end -end encryption thing. Does it have it? No, it doesn't. Not really. And SpaceX, if you remember, is a defense contractor. So they're held to a higher standard. Remember when uh, Musk hit that joint on the Joe Rogan podcast? <laughs> oh, DOD yeah. was not happy about that. <laughs> so I think he's taking things a little more serious these days. Elon Musk, SpaceX banned Zoom over privacy concerns memo. Not just the aforementioned, uh, the fact that it was recording the Zoom meetings. I mean, it didn't, it wasn't hiding it, but it wasn't exactly putting that front and center. But also because of the Zoom snafu where they accidentally routed some of their traffic through China for mysterious reasons. And the <laughs> fact that some of the encryption was maybe sort of not actually really encryption for real. It's some sort of homegrown nonsense. And then also the fact that they leaked a whole bunch of other stuff. There's like, you know what? Maybe we shouldn't use this. I'm sure China wouldn't have any interest, any interest in our rocket data. <laughs> yeah, none at all. No. They don't care about that kind of thing. They're bigger than that. Now, Musk, uh, like I said, he had some, uh, maybe some tone deaf responses in the early mm. days of the crisis. And I think he was trying to make up for that by sort of, you know, like being the hero later on. But his rescue effort was questioned by some. But he claims, no, it's perfectly fine, and it's just the trolls. Elon Musk defends sending quote-unquote non-invasive ventilators to hospitals, saying the criticism is from quote-unquote bot accounts, according to Newsweek. So I guess the ventilators that we need are the kind that they can just cut a hole in your throat and shove it directly into your trachea? They don't, no, they don't have to intubate you. They can go in. Oh, okay. And, uh, but it's like in your lungs. So it's like positive, negative, positive, negative. Now, they have CPAP, which is continuous, and BiPAP, which is on, off, on, off, but not in your lungs. Mm. So what he sent them, CPAP would have been useless. BiPAP, eh, maybe not for the intensive cases, but maybe like if you're just getting there, Mild, yeah. maybe that's useful. 
And then the full on ventilator where if you're serious case. Mm. And so an issue that I read too with the BiPAP machines is apparently they like aerosol aerosolize the virus. Yeah, it could spread because it's like a uh uh scuba equipment where it like yeah. jettisons the exhale. Mm. So So then it exposes anyone who's in the room, so like your nurses yeah. and stuff. Yeah, that seems like that that medical equipment was not designed for that. I I sort of got down a rabbit hole of of this kind of a thing, and apparently a common problem is when you get to that stage, like you probably would survive, but some of these machines, uh, the the phrase that I read was "pop your lungs like tires." So well, yeah, because it's yeah, like doing it all for you. Yeah, apparently you get at some point at some stage, and like. You're you're basically in recovery, but your lungs just give out and then pop like tires, and there's no recovering from that. I imagine that's like a calibration error. Right? I mean, you think about the number of people they have to deal with every day and how closely they should be monitoring a situation like that, but they've got 50 to yeah. do in the next hour. Well, yeah. that's apparently a common way that you die. So... I like the sidebar over here. It says active volcanoes around the world that could erupt run an article like that right now <laughs> well i think now would be the perfect time for uh the, what's, what is it uh the Dude. caldera oh yeah if the caldera went right now oh, man. if they if the earth was now some people have that theory that uh the earth is like you know striking back at us for climate change <laughs> and if that was true the ultimate combo move would be to hit you with the virus and then hit you with the caldera <laughs> during growing like, season like the oh there. no yeah, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the great filter, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so the other thing about Tesla is that they did not uh, give in to the whole, like, you're not essential thing. They were like, no, but we're Tesla. We're going to keep making cars no matter what. And they took a lot of flack for that. I think a sheriff in one of the California towns like sent him a letter and was like, you go home now. You are not essential. But... It seems like what the authorities weren't able to force him to do, the market has. Tesla is dismissing contractors from its California and Nevada factories, sources say. So these are not the Tesla employees, but the contractors. But this still amounts to a layoff. They are not getting orders, as you might imagine. Not a lot of people <laughs> buying Teslas right now. This seems like a heavy expense to take right now. When you can't travel. Yeah. Other companies are making concessions, and I don't know if this is necessarily related to... This is avoiding antitrust. That's all yeah, it is. And it, well, I think what's happening is now that we are completely living our lives online, people are paying more and more attention to these little problems. Yeah. These things that should have been taken care of a long time ago. Yeah. And so Apple's like, hey, let's get in front of this. Apple will stop taking a cut of some video app purchases made through the App Store. We've covered this in the past with like Netflix. Netflix is one that we talked about in the past where if you buy Netflix through Apple, through iTunes, then Apple wants a cut of that. And Netflix says, no, we're already sort of razor thin on the margins, so we're just throwing money away because a, ne a subscription to Netflix that includes the, the ability to run on your Apple devices versus... A subscription through iTunes, the iTunes would have to cost more because we get less money when Apple's involved. So Apple has said, you know what? Because of the whole antitrust thing, we're gonna just not do that. Do it just that way that. anymore. So like with Netflix, it was Netflix, Disney, and somebody else. It was like three or four other apps. Yeah. Anybody that sells video, and the way they had gotten around this before is they were like, no, we won't pay it. So instead of doing Apple Pay. Basically, all the app was was just a login portal. Yeah. And then you did everything on the site itself. And then Apple started blocking that app, and then it was yeah. like, well, it turned into a mess. So, that's smart. That 15% could have eventually cost them a lot more. Yeah. And why penalize your users? Yeah. Some people, if they're looking at two phones, and they're like, oh, this one doesn't do Netflix, they're just not going to buy it. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, uh, the article also points out, well, our, the article also mentions integrations with Apple, but fails to point out the really amazing thing about that for Apple is that Apple will still make money beyond the dreams of avarice just having integrations. So like, hey, Siri, find me some movies on Netflix that meet this criteria. Apple gets tons of marketing detail and is able to build a more accurate consumer profile with you. And, uh, you know, Netflix will want to integrate Siri into their application 
and Apple is going to make a ton of money that way. So they don't they don't need the fifteen percent. That's all they need. It they need all the money. <laughs> How are they going to survive this crisis, Wendell? You have to think about the corporations. <laughs> Now, like Kirsten said, uh, now maybe not the time you're planning a lot of large purchases, you know, with the uncertainty on the horizon. <laughs> but one thing you might think about buying is a new laptop because your whole world is now on the internet, right? And you're going to be faced with a choice. Now, you know, a lot of people are going to say it's not much of a choice these days, <laughs> but Intel will remind you <laughs> that they have blazingly fast cores. <laughs> Clock speeds are just off the charts. Uh, Don't worry about all that other stuff. It's the clock speed. Intel's 10th generation H-series laptop CPUs reach 5.3 gigahertz. The 10980HK, it's overclockable. And yeah, I just, I don't, I can't, I can't read this headline without sort of giggling because, uh, yeah, this is, uh, these, these, it remains to be seen. Uh, <laughs> are you saying they would lie about this? Kind of, are you saying that they would like, refrigerate the chip to get these numbers <laughs> that's what it's looking like <laughs> things are not looking good i mean the the laptops these models just came out we don't have enough benchmarks yet we've got slides like this i really worry about slides like this because it says gaming advantage with the 10th gen and they're talking about their their igpu the apple igpu is a little bit weak sauce here i mean i nah. yeah they point out here that uh the in terms of the CPU clock, okay, yeah, maybe, but with the video, the onboard video, not even close. Yeah. So if you are worried about gaming, then that clock speed's just out the window. Yeah. So we need to actually test these, like these models, these new CPUs, just to see what's... Although if, if you had discrete graphics, which a lot of those laptops will have. Yes. Well, even yeah. on even on the AMD side, they're, they're, even the, though the AMD built-in Vega GPU is so much better they're still bundling GPUs because, at least at the higher end. So, we but need that, to actually test them. But we should point out, it's not just the, the, the big i9 that gets that five plus clock speed. It's, was the, I think the i5 did too, right? Down to the i5? It was uh, 5.0 gigahertz, 5.1 gigahertz for pretty much all the mainstream CPUs, and then 5.3 for the monster cryogenic cooling, whatever. So. Now, based on everything else, those are selling for a major discount to AMD, right? Yeah. <laughs> Another company that is just raking it in when it comes to the current crisis because, hey, now, we remember we talked about uh, Microsoft and that new guy was like, you know what? Forget the desktop. We're going to the cloud. And everybody was like, really? Is that really the move you want to make? Well, turns out. Got to eat some crow here. <laughs> it worked out for him. The badness has led to a 775% increase in usage of Microsoft Azure cloud services. Now, this was, this was published at the time we're filming this. This was published a week ago. I think it's over 825% now. Like, it's just growing. All of these so, companies that have these mobile workforces that are working from home, they're just rolling out all of the Azure services. A minor increase, you would say. <laughs> just a minor one. Statistical anomaly. So yeah, that guy is. I think he's going to get a bonus this year. A small one. Yeah, yeah. If he survives, I think Bill Gates is going to be able to single-handedly fund the vaccine just on the dividends. <laughs> well, uh, some companies, unlike Tesla and Amazon, have said, "You know what? We're just everybody just go home. We're not making stuff right now. Just shut it all down." And oddly enough. Some of those workers are speaking out and saying, hey, factories are just doing nothing. Let's go in there and make emergency equipment. We could be doing this right now. General Electric workers launch protests and demand to make ventilators. G workers who normally make jet engines say, hey, our facilities are sitting idle. Why don't we build these? And Doesn't it take a while, though, to like change a whole production line over? Apparently not. Uh, we had the story as last week or the week before where it took some manufacturing facility like a week to was retool it? I their... I think Foxconn did it really quickly. Yeah, it's like, oh, we're going to stop making yeah. iPhones and now we're going to make masks. And, and even it's... the smaller companies, Razor did it. Oh, yeah. If Razor can oh, do yeah. it, GE can do it with <laughs> you know, ease. Now, the thing I, I, I question here is... The ventilator's uh, a little more complicated than just like a respirator, though. Yeah, but they're making jet engines, so... We could we used to yeah. do masks. I mean, hey, just masks. Yeah, masks but would be better than nothing. Do they, they, everybody who's making ventilators or uh, masks and stuff are donating them. So do these guys expect to get paid? 
I mean, if you want to volunteer your time, that sounds like a great idea. But if you expect to go back to work and get paid for something the company has to donate. Well, the, uh, the, the article points out that the workers were saying, we're not striking, we're just demonstrating. So it's like, we'll do whatever the company asks us to do, but we are demonstrating to say, hey, why aren't we doing this? But they're not working. So yeah. of course it's not a strike. I don't think they're doing anything wrong. Yeah. I mean, they're yeah. probably just bored, a lot of them. <laughs> Please I mean, let think me about, get out of this house. You spend your days making jet engines, and they're just at home with your dumb family. <laughs> like, oh, God, I got to do something. Just let me make a mask. And while everybody was busy with other things, uh, that big merger finally happened. I, don't, oh. I thought the states were suing them, I guess. Those yeah. suits were all dropped. I guess the states, you know, got busy with something. I don't know what. T-Mobile officially completes a merger with Sprint and CEO uh, uh, with uh, yeah Sprint and CEO John Laguer. I, I always mispronounce his name. Steps down ahead of schedule, so he's like, you know what? I we're in a weird time right now. I'm out. See you guys. Can I get the? Can I, can I cash those options? <laughs> I'll, I'll take those. A lot of people cash those options. A lot, of, <laughs> a lot of people in Congress cash their options earlier before the public knew anything. Not salty about that at all. Oh yeah, that. Uh, Makes That's got to be investigated when this all shakes yeah. out. That is... I really... Obvious. The one that sold all of their cruise line stuff before there was any public knowledge. And then bought teleconferencing uh, stock. Yeah. It's just... Come on. I hate to say it, but uh, Crazy Eyes Cortez, maybe the one time in the history of the United States I've agreed with her, <laughs> she's introducing a, if you are in the government, you do not trade on the market. I <laughs> totally agree with that. 100 percent i think it would be okay That's if you fair. had an index fund or something that is you know formulaic like that but other than that yeah no no because you could still play that the index fund? situation like you just it's some something somebody else manages that's just like i'm gonna have an index fund of like the top 100 yeah but then the, they're gonna call that guy uh, yeah. no you should be out completely <laughs> no investments and then that would keep these sociopaths out of the government that's probably true yeah yeah that's that'd be a great thing to do we work, you know that company that leased out workspaces? It's a scam. During the biggest work stoppage in history? The whole thing is a scam. Not going well for them. <laughs> we work founder misses out on one billion as SoftBank cancels share buyout. <laughs> Look at this guy's face. And uh, well, the the uh, SoftBank was like, you know, we had this agreement that like if things were good with WeWork, that we would buy the owner's stock for like nine hundred seventy five million, but. You know the the global crisis and blah blah blah. Those are those are not good. But also, there's an awful lot of people that were in the company before we came along that are now being investigated as criminals. So we're gonna bail. And the, the we were people were like, "This is a complete surprise." And it's like, dudes, you're being investigated as like criminals. You are cr probably like you're alleged criminals. It's no wonder the SoftBank is like, you know, let's just wait and see how this plays out. We this guy's done. face is my whole f experience of like 2020 so far. They're done. But he's still, you know, hundreds of millions, hundreds of millionaire, just not billionaire anymore. So he'll be fine. The other people that we work, maybe not. But that was a, a dumb business and timed very poorly, unfortunately. So I think anybody who was going to do a WeWork office now probably understands it's like, just do it from home. It works. Yeah. You can just do it that way. It's so much cheaper. <laughs> we will see a change in construction trends in America where you have a legit home office that's an actual home office room that you go to do your home office things in. Well, that, that would be nice. Like looking at houses, almost none of them have like a dedicated office space. Oh. I have an office and a cat room. <laughs> cats you planned ahead. <laughs> You should give each of the cats their own bedroom, and they should both have bunk beds. They don't like being apart. They get very, uh, you know, testy when they're separated at all. <laughs> they don't like that. I will have that. I do not currently have that. I wish I could go back in time and tell, bunk beds? And tell past me that, hey, I need a separate space for this and this, because then I wouldn't, I wouldn't have to be dealing with the other thing. Would you also tell past you that you were going to get a cat against your will? <laughs> Probably, yes. It's like, <laughs> let me give you a long list of warnings here. <laughs> How's the trip? Is the trip still on? I don't know. Uh, well, Cloudflare. Cloudflare. Now, we've talked a lot about there was the uh, the UK 
anti-porn thing. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That didn't go too well. Nope. Then Australia was like, we're going to do the exact same thing. And is that still in the works? That is still in the works. Yeah. So uh, it's going to turn out the same way. And I think you kind of have to do it on a voluntary basis. And Cloudflare has a solution. I don't think this is going to work out because kids are almost always more savvy than their parents when it comes to technology. This is easy to change. But this is going to be an amazing thing for practical jokes. <laughs> Cloudflare launches a DNS-based parental control service. So they've got some new IP addresses that you can plug into your router to use for DNS. One is just blocking malware, and the other one is blocking malware and adult content. So you give you can set up some more elaborate stuff with Cloudflare, but this actually could work. Like if you're savvy enough to configure your, your router and configure your router to block other DNS servers, that's the one-two punch, then you might be okay, assuming your kids don't know the password to the router. (laughs) Now, if people annoy you by trying to get you to fix their computer constantly, just pop this DNS in and uh, they'll never bother you again. Yeah. Uh, Also, DNS DNS over HTTPS, your children can defeat this with DNS over HTTPS, so. Well, Christy, you say they'll bother you as they find the problem, but then they have yeah. to admit why yeah, they're true. calling you, which is going to be <laughs> hilarious. Because you'll be, like, be like, oh, something's wrong. Something's wrong. Well, I go to Netflix. Huh? It seems to be working fine. That site's fine. I don't know what you're talking about. So, interesting. And that is free. doesn't cost anything, obviously. So, I guess that's good for some people. The uh, I, You know, I've... I've been leaving the Boeing news out of the tech news because I I guess it's technology, definitely, but there's just so much of it, and it's just (laughs) a constant deluge. But this one was too good because of the old trope about have you turned it on and off again, you know, like that (laughs) that tired old joke. But it just, in terms of a plane, it's so funny. Yeah. Boeing 787s must be turned off and on again every 51 days to prevent misleading data from being shown to pilots. This isn't the first time we've covered this, but in the Boeing thing because there were some problems with the new 787s uh in the boeing like operational manual they've actually changed the operational manual to just say ah, reboot the phone or re- reboot the phone reboot the plane every you know every month or so because uh it may be showing erroneous data on things like your airspeed controller and your altimeter and your uh you know artificial horizon and it's like mm, those seem like critical systems, Boeing. Do we really? I mean, is it? And it's like, ah, it just builds up some old data in there and just reboot it. It's fine. Now, that's not the engines of the plane. It's just the network and the electronic system. And they pointed out, I never really thought about this, but it makes sense. When they park the plane, it has to be cleaned and, you know, disinfected and everything. Uh, they just plug it up to external power during that. And mm-hmm. the internal systems don't stop during yeah. that time. So, huh. Interesting. It can run for well over 51 days without ever being shut down. So now you got to remember to do that. Yeah. But that also means there's definitely bugs. There's definitely bugs in oh. the software. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you like think you just put like a post-it note on the dash of the plane that's like, hey, this was restarted on. Like, yeah, it's like, you know, a like an oil change. Freshness yeah. sticker. I mean, I'm pretty sure that the, the, the IT people could get a ticket. Like you could just go make a ticket in their ticketing system that is like here for a regression test simulate 51 days of operational time and then look and see like where the like what stuff's in memory so that you have some idea of what garbage is not being collected and you would actually that would become one of your integration tests yeah but like you say there are bugs but i think with boeing at this point it's like starship (laughs) troopers they just don't care Uh it's it's the worst possible bugs that you can imagine (laughs) this isn't really one of the more serious ones uh, and we talked about this. I don't remember if we were talking about this on the news or whatever. We were talking about touch screens in cars. Uh, that was a lunch. Terrible. Yeah. I hate the touch screen in my car. It's such an awful because you have to look at it and look away from the road. Whereas a more, I'm losing this headphone so quickly, a more tactile approach, uh, you know, you get that feedback. And it's just such a stupid thing. So we got to celebrate Honda for this one. Honda bucks the industry trend by removing touchscreen controls. That makes sense. They, they they said, and I quote, things like air conditioners, people don't want to control that through a touchscreen because you can't just feel your way around it. It's, yes. Thank you, yeah. Honda. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
Yeah. And it's like, oh, but it looks so clean just having the one giant touchscreen in the middle of your console. <laughs> Tesla. <laughs> yeah, it looks stupid. They're always the worst kind of touchscreens, too, because I feel like you have to really mash them to get yeah. them to register a touch. Terrible. Well, it's they're trying to cut corners everywhere they can to get the cost of the car down without yeah. sacrificing performance. And certainly a touchscreen is where you can do that. Plus, it has to be, you know, you don't want to inadvertently brush it and change some integral setting while you're driving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, I hope that trend picks up and we get rid of the stupid touchscreens. Now, we talked about uh, they've really been vilifying game downloads because they claim that a lot of this congestion we're getting on the internet, which seems to be overblown, everything seems fine, actually, yeah. is coming from those pesky gamers and their downloads. Not the online gaming, which doesn't really use a ton of bandwidth, but those downloads. So they're just so big and so terrible. And... Some of the you know companies have been trying to make concessions to that. Valve has come up with one that I think is really not going to affect a lot of people. I agree with this. Valve to delay some Steam auto updates to preserve bandwidth. Steam will only auto update games you've played in the last three days. That makes sense. I'm okay with this. Steam spends a lot of time updating games that I really don't care about. Do you think maybe it's like maybe the internet's worse in more densely populated areas? Because, like I said, I haven't noticed any issues either, but maybe it's... Well, we had the, the map last week. Texas was bad. Residential internet in New York is hot garbage for the most part. Huh. Which is, like, New York City, which is surprising. Like, you would think it would be... No, it's just... Yeah. It's, it's, it's hot garbage for the most part. Well, but New York probably has... Because it's one of those places where people are working around the clock. Mm. So you probably have a lot of cycling on and off that you don't have now. Yeah. Because everybody's at home. But yeah, I really don't think we're in too much danger of the whole like overloading things. <laughs> Cause Certainly not around here. It, I mean, it's it's terrible, yes, but it's enough for everybody to have a little bit. And they've already had systems in place to throttle it when they need to because they're evil. <laughs> so they can always do that. The airlines are definitely... Now, other, aside from the Boeing thing, they are having a bad time <laughs> because people really aren't flying unless they absolutely have to. But if you do have to fly, you can get some real bargains right now. You can really get a flight to Orlando is like thirteen dollars right now. From here, <laughs> if you're going to go economy now, that's not the nicer ticket. But if you really want to fly for just the bottom dollar, you can buy those cheap tickets, and they really want to discourage that. They really want to discourage that. <laughs> American Airlines uh, has crammed 11 passengers into three rows at the back of the plane because they only bought basic economy tickets. So the plane was completely empty and they made everybody sit at the back of the plane in the crappiest seats because letting them sit anywhere else would have been, quote unquote, an upgrade. Now, in the middle of the flight... They came like they came to their senses and were like, you know what? All right, fine, just sit somewhere else. I've been furious. I, I'm so angry. It sucks because on planes, the, the airlines have such power now because of the whole, you know, like nine eleven <laughs> federal marshal thing. Yeah, yeah. So you can't really buck them in any way, or they'll just you know just turn the plane around and arrest you. Oh. But I don't know if I could have resisted just getting up and going to another seat. Like, what yeah. are you going to do about it? It's Jesus Fight Christ. Me. There's a pandemic. What's wrong with you people? You could have gotten a free retirement from that. Didn't you see that where they beat up that doctor who was like, no, I'm already on the plane. You yeah. can't make me get off. I have a ride of carriage. And they were like, no, get off. And he, he, yeah, he, he, did, he retired. He did well. <laughs> after that. And you probably would have got the same situation here. Yeah. Because that's ridiculous. But... People just accepted it, I guess. With their twelve dollar ticket, they're like, "I'm not going to make any waves." Uh, pro tip: If this happens to you, just fight them. <laughs> just start swinging. Just, just pull your shirt off. <laughs> well, I think I think the doctor got what he got out, because bro. he just he didn't defend himself, and they just punched the crap out of him until he was unconscious. Yeah, well, he wouldn't get up. Yeah. So like, I think he just sort of like it, that's uh, the cops call that uh, resisting without violence or resisting without something. So it's like, if you don't actively help me cuff you, you're resisting, basically, in the eyes of the law. <laughs> and finally, 
We talk about all the companies that are winning because of this terrible thing, because they happen to offer products that when you're sitting at home, you want. And a big one there is Disney Plus. Now Disney Plus was already launched in most of the world, but one of the biggest markets they hadn't broken into yet, and now they are for a really reasonable price. Disney debuts its streaming service in India for $20 a year. Disney Plus Hotstar. All right, I need a VPN that's in India like yesterday. I would give Disney 20 bucks a year for all of the Disney Plus stuff. But that also goes to show you that <laughs> they could make money at 20 a year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, if you don't want to... No, but we should point out that the uh, average income in India is real low compared to the U.S. <laughs> compared to the U.S. before the thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, it's not... I mean, there is a, a ratio there. But because of that... 20 might even be too much for some of those people. So you can get another one for, what was it, 8? That doesn't include the Disney content, but you get the Indian. Oh, no, it's five thirty, five dollars and thirty cents. Yeah. So you don't get the American stuff or the international stuff, but you still get the Indian stuff and you still get their sports streaming. The Premier League. Which they're big fans of. Apparently popular. I've have, I have read some harrowing reports from uh, some of the poorer parts of India during all this. But Though they're... They're all supposed to be quarantined, but like those people are all so packed together in the bigger cities that it's almost impossible. But have you looked at the curve? Like the international curve? No, I haven't curve? looked at any graphs for that. India is not even where we are yet. Wow. So oh. with that population, if they get to where we are, that's going to be bad. Yeah. But we're, we're nowhere near the top. Oh, yeah. We no, still have like three, four weeks of rapid Increases. growth before we get to the peak. Uh, at least at the time we're filming this, New York is still on the exponential curve. Here where we are, it's flattening out a bit, and our numbers are relatively low. But but we're low population density. Yeah, yeah, I don't think enough people are taking the distancing thing seriously. Yeah, so I don't think we were ever in a ton of danger. But mm. high population like New York, yeah, it's, yeah. it's madness. Well, well they, have you seen here in Kentucky they, in uh Lexington, they've started moving like they're making field hospitals in the football fields. Uh, yeah, the ice rink is a morgue. That's yeah, yikes. Do they have enough deaths to merit that? Yeah, really. Oh, it's getting there. It's uh, almost a thousand. Well, the governor said that like the reason they're doing some of this now in Louisville and Lexington is because they don't need it yet, but they probably will soon. Yeah. So that's kind of kind of scary. I've, did you guys see the in Louisville? Somebody set up a. a testing tent oh yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. oh yeah it was, it was fake. fake it was just some guy <laughs> yeah. did he, he just have like regular q-tips they, they caught like, him he, he didn't even yeah. change his gloves yeah <laughs> he just oh. was waving people through yeah oh, oh that's, that brings out the worst it really it does. really does all right what do we got for friday friday's whatever's left which is going to be robots and social media and nonsense we'll see you then Bye.